Okay, number one, conservation of momentum. So let's define conservation momentum first. I'll give you kind of the simple definition, um, and then we'll kind of get into a more nuanced version a little bit later on. But the simple version is this. Uh, the total momentum of a system, which is just a group of objects, the total momentum before a collision is equal to the total momentum after. So total momentum... Um, of a system before a collision is equal to the total momentum after okay so the momentum you have of everything added together before a collision is equal to the momentum of everything you have after a collision and the equation is pretty straightforward okay the momentum of object one initial plus the momentum of object two initial plus any others that you have but we'll usually do two equals the momentum of object one final plus the momentum of object two final plus any others that you have. So the total momentum before a collision is equal to the total momentum after. Okay, that's simple. So what are inelastic collisions? Inelastic collisions are any collision that conserves momentum. That's it. It's as simple as that. Any collision that conserves momentum. Okay, so examples of these would be like almost anything. <laughs> so car collisions, two cars hitting each other conserves momentum. Yep, that's it. That's good. Uh, kicking a soccer ball conserves momentum. Yes. Bumper cars conserve momentum. Yes. Bouncing on a trampoline can serve momentum. Yes. I mean, almost anything you can think of for a collision is going to be uh, inelastic. Let me give you an example of something that isn't. Crashing a car into a wall. Okay? Because there's an outside force of the ground holding the wall still that is in the problem that normally would not be there. So outside forces are going to be examples of not being an inelastic collision. However... I'm a wonderful human being, as you all know. I'm not going to give you problems like that. All of the problems you're going to have will be inelastic collisions or possibly elastic. But they're all going to at least be inelastic. So what does it mean if it's completely inelastic? If it's completely inelastic, it means the objects stick together. Okay, think of like those cartoon movies uh, or shows where like one character throws a ball at the other person super fast, the other person catches it, and then it like makes them go flying backwards. That would be an inelastic collision. The person got stuck to the object. Okay, that's an inelastic collision. Sorry, completely inelastic collision. Look at us, cruising right along. We're already on four. All right, what are elastic collisions? So elastic collisions are any collision that conserves momentum and motion. 
Now, this motion has a particular name. It's called kinetic energy. But since we haven't talked about it yet, I'm not going to um, require it for the definition. Just know that it needs to conserve uh, motion. So what do I mean by that? Let me give you an example here. So you see, in pool, when you take the cue ball and you hit the cue ball forward and it hits some other ball, what will happen a lot of times is the cue ball will stop and the other ball will continue forward with the same motion that the cue ball had. That's an elastic collision. Whenever the motion is equally distributed and the momentum is conserved, that's elastic. Questions on those two things, elastic versus inelastic? Because we haven't done energy, you just need to know what the difference is. You're not going to solve the different problems. All of our problems, we're going to solve just like any elastic problems. Okay, how does momentum relate to Newton's three laws? So, first law we know is the law of inertia. Objects in motion stay in motion. Oh, law of Inertia, good job, B. Objects in motion stay in motion. Objects at rest stay at rest unless acted on by a non-zero net force. Okay? So what does that have to do with momentum? Well, quite literally, everything. Momentum is inertia in motion, right? Objects in motion will stay in motion. If an object has a velocity, that's its momentum, and it will continue with that momentum unless what happens? Unless you imply an impulse. Which is a non-zero net force. Objects will keep doing whatever their momentum is unless something changes them. Hence an impulse. Momentum is Newton's first law. That's what it's just what it is. It's just a different way of thinking about it. But it is Newton's first law. Okay. Newton's second law. So Newton's second law is F net equals MA. Let's see, I want to make sure this one doesn't get confused. Let's do a completely different color. F net equals MA is the second law. So, uh, but we're really only dealing with one force at a time. So instead of F net, I'm just going to write F. And instead of A, I'm going to write the actual definition for acceleration, which is change in velocity over time. And since we're talking about collisions, I'm going to make this delta T. It is the same thing, just, just for us being consistent with how we're doing this unit. I'm going to multiply delta T to both sides because I'm like you guys. I don't like fractions. Psst. Silly fractions. So now I get this. F delta T. equals m delta v. Oh, but notice what I got here. mv, that's momentum. So instead of mv, I'm going to write p. And oh, snap! Get excited. So you just had your minds blown by science! Okay, only I get that excited about it, but still. This is this. It's the same equation. This equation I tricked you into doing last unit again. 
to be fair, the reason why we do it this way is because this allows us to figure out what is required to make the motion change. This is just telling me what the motion change is. This is telling me what's required. This equation is better for multiple forces. This equation is better for figuring out what's going on to this object. But I wanted you to see impulse momentum theorem. It is Newton's second law. Absolutely. It's the same thing. Not even like it is the same thing. So you might have an idea where this is going for the third law. So let's go ahead and do it. So the third law is every action has an equal and opposite reaction, right? Every action has equal and opposite reaction. And so if we're thinking about forces, we would say that the force acting on object A has to equal the equal and opposite force on object B. So the force on A has to equal the opposite force on B. Right? I just wrote an equation of what I said. But keep in mind that this unit, we're being using impulse. We're doing force applied over the time. So I'm going to include impulse here. I'm going to include delta T. And you might be thinking that's cheating, but it's not because it's the same for both A and B. It's kind of like if I multiply both sides in the equation by 2. I can absolutely do that because I did the same thing to both sides. So I'm just going to include momentum here. Or sorry, not momentum, time interval, just so I can keep this as impulse, which is what we're doing this unit. But, I mean, I don't really want to do impulse because it's Friday, and everybody knows you don't want to do impulse on Fridays. So I'm going to change this from being impulse into momentum change, right? Because impulse equals change in momentum. So this is the change in momentum for A. This would be negative the change in momentum for B. Yes, I can. Thank you for asking so nicely. Uh, but I don't want to leave it in those deltas. If I'm being honest, I don't like deltas. They make me sad. So I'm going to change this to final minus initial. Momentum final of A minus momentum initial of A. I'm just doing what my deltas mean. They just mean change, final minus initial. So negative final of B minus initial of B. And I don't like this negative sign here, so I'm going to distribute this negative sign. And that's going to give me this up here. Sorry, I'm running out of space a little bit here. That's going to give me this. P final A minus P initial A equals, so negative times that is negative P final B. Negative, negative becomes positive plus P initial B. Almost done. I know I'm going fast. I'm trying to get done in 15. Let's get all the A's in. Uh, let's get all the initials and finals on the same side. Instead of A's and B's on the same side, let's get initials and finals on the same side. Oh, and if it makes you feel better, I'm not going to make you do this on the test. I'm just showing you how these things go together. You should know the way they work. You don't have to recreate it. So I added the B to the other side. Let's add the A to the other side. Ah, 40 seconds. And look what I get. P final A plus P final B equals P initial B plus P initial A. A. Oh my gosh, it's the equation I just gave y'all.